Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be explaining the laminar boundary layer on a flat plate. In external flow, the vast majority of the flow field is going to be a constant velocity, which we usually call the far field velocity, or u. But we still need to enact our no-slip condition on the surface which means that at each point on the airfoil, the velocity has to be equal to zero. So somehow we need to get from this zero up to the far field velocity, but the velocity profile that we have is not nearly as simple as what we had for pipe flow. So in general, it looks something like this. We have a straight line at the beginning, but then it starts to curve towards our far field velocity. This local velocity, we usually refer to as a lowercase u. This flow deficit that we have is the boundary layer on top of our flat plate. The boundary layer is a very complex flow field. At each x location, this exact velocity profile is changing. So we've developed some tools, some measurement systems, that help us get a feel for what the boundary layer actually looks like. The first of these, is known as the displacement thickness. The symbol that we use for it is a lowercase delta. It is defined as the height at which the local velocity is equal to 99% of the far field velocity. And as I've drawn, that distance changes with x. Now there are two other thicknesses that we'll define. The next is delta star, which we call the displacement thickness. And this is defined based on the mass deficit. If you take this area in the boundary layer, this is going to be capital U minus lowercase u. So we have a velocity multiplied by some area, which is going to be some vertical distance multiplied by some distance into the page. So velocity multiplied by area is a volumetric flow rate. If we multiply that by rho, then we end up with a mass flow rate. So the area in this curve is going to be the integral from zero to infinity of rho multiplied by the deficit, the velocity deficit, which is this far field velocity minus the local velocity. And then that's going to be multiplied by dA, which is just the distance into the page, which we're going to call b, multiplied by dy. And our goal here is to calculate some distance from the surface, which would create an equal area if the entire thing were filled in. So this distance here is our delta star. So we're going to take this total mass deficit and we're going to divide out our constants, which are rho, u, and b. And we're left with an integral from 0 to infinity of u divided by u, which is 1, minus our local velocity divided by our far field velocity, all of that multiplied by dy. So the end result of this is this entire integral is exactly our displacement thickness. So once again, this displacement thickness refers to the mass deficit that we find due to our boundary layer. It's called the displacement thickness because if we had ideal flow that tried to mirror this boundary layer, then the thickness of our plate here would have to increase just a little bit in order to account for the mass that we're losing. The last thickness we're going to talk about is called the momentum thickness, and we usually use theta as its name. So if delta star was the mass deficit, theta is going to be the momentum deficit. And we need to draw a slightly different picture to talk about this. For the momentum deficit, we're going to be tracking mass as it travels through our boundary layer. So what this means is that we're going to include the effect of the displacement thickness in our calculations. The bottom surface here is just going to be following our flat plate the top surface is going to be following the path of the flow, so it's going to be a streamline, and nothing is going to flow through that. So everything is going to be coming in on the left, and it's going to be coming in at a constant velocity u, 
we've chosen a point far enough away so that there's absolutely no disturbance. On the right hand side, we're going to have a boundary layer. The other trick here is that we're not going to be integrating all the way to infinity. We're actually only going to be integrating as far as a distance h, on the left hand side anyways. On the right hand side, the amount that we need to integrate is actually h plus delta star because we've included the effects of this mass deficit. We need to go a little bit higher so we include the amount of mass that we need. So doing all this, our momentum deficit is just going to be the amount of momentum coming in minus the amount of momentum leaving. So the momentum coming in is going to be the integral from 0 to h of rho u squared multiplied by b times dy. The momentum leaving is going to be the integral from 0 to h plus delta star of rho times the local velocity squared multiplied by b dy. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before, where we take out all of our constants. So this is going to be rho times capital U squared times b. We're going to have two separate integrals here. The first is going to be the integral from 0 to h. Now we're going to split up the second integral into an integral from 0 to h and an integral from h to h plus delta star. So this first piece is easy. We've taken out all of it because it's all constants, and we just end up with 1. There's a piece of the second integral that is from 0 to h. So if we take rho u squared b out of this integral, we end up with just lowercase u squared divided by capital U squared and all of that's going to be multiplied by dy. We still have a piece of this integral that we haven't accounted for, which is from h to h plus delta star. So we need to subtract off the integral from h to h plus delta star of everything inside the integral divided by rho u squared b. If we choose h so that it is sufficiently above delta, the disturbance thickness, then we can say that there's no disturbance in this part of our integral, which means that our lowercase u is going to be the same as our uppercase u. So we actually just end up with 1 again for this little piece of our integral. For this piece right here, we actually end up with just h plus delta star minus h, or just delta star. Let's rewrite this. This entire thing is going to be equal to rho u squared b multiplied by these two integrals. So the first integral we can just copy directly. The second one was equal to delta star, so we just copy our answer from up here. The trick here is that since we're talking about deficits and we've defined h in such a way that it's far enough above our disturbance thickness, then there's no actual contribution for this integral all the way from h to infinity. So we can replace this h with infinity with no ill effect. So now the integration bounds that we have match, and we can just add these together. So the end result here is rho u squared b multiplied the, the integral from 0 to infinity the ones are going to cancel out. Our u over u is going to end up being positive. And then we'll subtract off our u squared over u squared. This integral right here is exactly our momentum thickness. And once again, this momentum thickness that we have here relates to the momentum deficit due to our boundary layer. So what this means is we need an additional theta worth of height in order to get the extra momentum that's lost due to the shear stress on the surface of our flat plate. So this momentum thickness is intrinsically linked to the shear stress, to the amount of friction that's dissipating this momentum. So if we can figure out what exactly this momentum thickness is, then there's probably a way for us to get to the shear stress, which can tell us things about drag and how much uh, force it actually requires to push this air over our flat plate. Fortunately, we've had a solution for the value of the local flow field for a long time, and that solution is known as the Blasius solution. 
And the Blasius solution is something called a self-similar velocity profile. And what this means is that if we have a solution at one x location, then we should be able to squish it in just the right way to make it fit at any other location. So self-similarity just means that these things look the same, they've just been scaled appropriately. And our solution ends up looking something like this. Basically what we've been drawing, but we can give it a little more detail. So we usually define it up to about this point. This is a point where the height in non-dimensional terms, eta, is equal to 5.0. At that point, our local velocity divided by our field velocity is right around 0.99. So the disturbance thickness of our self-similar velocity profile is eta equal to 5.0. Let's look at exactly how this is scaled. The y-axis is eta, and it's equal to y, the distance from the flat plate, divided by x, multiplied by the Reynolds number based on x. The x-axis is just the local field velocity divided by the far field velocity. The details of this solution are a bit too complicated to write down here, but with this profile, we can calculate our three thicknesses at any point. Our disturbance thickness, we said, was when eta is equal to 5.0, and we can write that out as 5.0 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number multiplied by x. The displacement thickness looks pretty much the same, except we end up with a value of 1.721, again divided by the Reynolds number and multiplied by x. And then finally, our momentum thickness has a numerical value of 0 0.664, and the rest looks the same. So our question here is how do we get from this momentum thickness to the shear stress? And the way we can do that is by taking a thin little slice of this control volume here. Coming into this little slice, we're going to have some momentum, and I'm going to call the momentum going into phase one. And coming out, we're going to have a different momentum. That's going to be the momentum coming from phase two. And these two are going to be different. There's going to be some change in momentum, but the mass is going to be the same. So what that means is that we need some forces to change our momentum. And that force comes from our bottom surface. And this is going to be just tau multiplied by the thickness of our control volume here, which is just delta x. So what we're going to say is that momentum 1 minus momentum 2 is going to be equal to tau multiplied by, I guess we need a b here since this is going to be an area. So tau times b times delta x. But we can also say that this momentum is going to be the change in momentum with respect to x multiplied by delta x. So these delta x's will cancel out. So we've linked tau to the amount of momentum. What I want to do next is to link the momentum to the momentum deficit. So we're interested here in the change in momentum. Well, the change in momentum is just going to be the opposite of the change of the momentum deficit. So we can actually say that the change in momentum here is going to be negative rho u squared b theta, and we need to take the derivative of this. Now most of these are constants that we can just take out. So this is going to be equal to a negative rho u squared b just multiplied by d theta by dx. Now I've made a mistake in my definition down here. I actually need a negative here. The momentum of phase 2 is equal to momentum of phase 1 plus the change in momentum times delta x. So that would end up being a negative. The, the momentum one would cancel out. So we need a negative here. That would end up being positive and a positive. Okay, with that taken care of, let's do a little bit of work to simplify this theta. Now, we know what the Reynolds number with respect to x is. We can say that the Reynolds number with respect to x is just equal to rho times u times x divided by mu. 
plugging that in here, we have more constants that we can take away. This would be rho u squared times b. Then we would have 0 0.664. I'm going to go ahead and have this d by dx out here multiplied by 1 over the square root of this rex, which would be square root of mu over the square root of rho ux multiplied by this x. And once again, we said that this was equal to tau times b. So if we cancel out these b terms, then we can write that tau is equal to rho u squared multiplied by 0 0.664, and I can bring out the constants here to get square root of mu over rho u. We just have d by dx of the square root of x. So the derivative of the square root of x is just equal to 1 half multiplied by 1 over the square root of x. So this ends up being rho u squared multiplied by 0.664 divided by 2, or 0 0.332. And then we have the square root of mu over rho u x, which means that we can write this as the square root mu over rho u x. And the end result here is that tau is equal to rho u squared times 0 0.332 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number. And this is our final result from this section. If we have the shear stress, we can integrate along the surface in order to get the total drag. But for right now, we've taken this definition of the momentum thickness and the Blasius solution for the momentum thickness and arrived at a value for the shear stress, which was our goal for this video. One final thing to keep in mind is that we assumed from the start that this was a laminar boundary layer. The Reynolds number for a fully laminar flat plate has to be less than 5 times 10 to the fifth. Past this point, the flow becomes turbulent, and the Blasius solution that we came up with here no longer applies. But for laminar flow at least, we have the shear stress.